Now a legend of Fleet Street. After taking his first photograph of Prince Charles, the year was? 1975. And there it is. That. Prince Charles feeding that horsey sugar lumps there. It's Arthur Edwards. And Arthur has spent the last 45 years following the royal family's every move. Yeah, he celebrated his 80th birthday last week. And as you can see, there he is looking fabulous, I have to say. 80, happy birthday, Arthur, first thing. Congratulations. Many happy Thanks, returns, Thank mate. You. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, Arthur... Oh, sir, thank you. 40, 40 odd years of following the royals, but then I hear that you didn't even want the job in the first place. No, I didn't. I was doing very well playing, the, covering cricket, football, and uh, general news. But you know, when they give you a promotion, I think you've got to give it a go. And uh, and for a couple of weeks it was miserable, but after that it got really good. And uh, and when I started getting the pictures published, that really is a it was a great buzz. What was the difference between miserable and what you term really good? Well, let me tell you, he was his, his, Prince of Wales's ship was berthed at Harwich for three days, and I had to stay in Harwich for three days. I never laid eyes on him, and I thought, my God, it's got to be better than this. But uh, eventually, as I say, I got the picture of the polo, and he played a lot of polo, and a lot of pretty girls turned up with him at the polo, until eventually um, Diana turned up, and that was the uh, that was the real start because Diana was. Uh, was, as you know, sensational, and I covered her for 17 years. Uh, and uh, it was just, uh, that was the first picture I took of her at the, at the polo. But, and, yeah. and so, you know, it was, it was, it was exciting. And, of course. Uh, and I met and a lot and of it's history. People. It's history. You're part of yeah, history there. But, Arthur, tell yeah. me this. What is the difference between you going out, licking your lips, enjoying your job, um, having a relationship? Do you have to have a relationship with the royal family? And if so, what was that relationship like? But it wasn't too good in the beginning. I can remember uh, getting a serious telling off from the Prince of Wales on uh, several occasions. Uh, but slowly, uh, as of working with him and, and listening to the speech he was making, and I realised he was a visionary. You know, he was talking about climate change 25 years ago, and he was talking about organic food, and people were poo-pooing him, and yet now you can't move in shops for it. But, uh, you know, he was he was a visionary, and I and I got to, to admire what he was doing and started to copy him, and I sort of put a lick I drive an electric car and I got solar panels on my roof and I'm and I'm, I'm pretty much you know he's influenced me as because I watched him talk to presidents asking them not to rip up their rainforests begging them not to do it you know and uh, and not to throw plastic into the sea I mean you know this man uh, and, and I've got to not only to enjoy working with him but I, I do actually like him a lot and also, uh, you watched that royal romance you mentioned, Diana. She wasn't Princess Diana then. Um, and then you took, you tracked her down, didn't you, and got that that famous picture where she obviously wasn't wearing a petticoat. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? I uh, I, I went traipsed around several nurseries that morning because and finally I found her and asked her to if she'd do a picture for me, and she agreed. But halfway, literally, Ruth, and this is the gospel gospel truth. Halfway through that session, the sun came out, and not only did I have a, a picture, I had a great picture, and it was the page one picture, and the headline was Charlie's Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very and nice. what did he make of it? <laughs> well, he thought apparently, you know, he didn't know she had such lovely legs. <laughs> there you go. Uh, can we talk about her, her children, um, who to this day, there's your own newspaper, and they make front page of that uh, paper today. And this um, accentuates, this talks about the rift uh, that there is between Harry and William. For you, that's more than a story. That's that's personal because you've known these lads since they were babies. Since they were born, since the mother carried them out of the hospital, and uh, I've watched them grow up together. And they were very, very close. Uh, I can remember going to the Sutu, that picture you're showing there, where where Harry was showing William the work he was doing with these young boys. You know, getting them getting them an education. That was a night school. And then they played football and they played on opposite sides and they were tearing into each other, but they were laughing and hugging. And and the tragedy is that they're no longer talking to each other. And, you know, uh, it must be over Meghan because before that, I mean, they were her, him, Catherine and William, Harry, Catherine and William were doing wonderful things together. You know, the heads up, the, the mental health charity. Uh, they were they were inspired. And now, of course, Harry is no longer in this country, which is sad, not only for for them, but for, for our readers who, who love this man. I mean, he was, he was the pop, most popular member of the royal family. He was, 
he was so exciting to work with him. And I can't tell you, he'd go on tour with him and every day there would be great pictures and he would, and he would really go out of his way to help you and chat to you. One day he made me a cup of tea. Another day he came and had a drink with us all down on the beach. I mean, he is just, he was just a, an exciting young man. Uh, and, and, and to support his brother, we thought he would be doing it for the rest of his life. I can't believe this has happened. Were you able to form any sort of relationship with Megan when she came on the scene? Was there awareness of, you know, her job, her duty, and the role you guys had to play as photographers? The first year, I thought she was sensational. I, I, I did lots of trips with her. I went to Morocco and I went to all around the Britain Island. And she was great, but four times I asked the Palace, or maybe three times I asked the Palace, if we, as a, as a media group, could meet Megan, and it never happened. And I think if she, if we had have met her, and if she'd have met us, <clears throat> things might have been different. You know, it might see that we're human and she's human. Unfortunately, she did get some bad press, uh, and that's that's that was a mistake. But um, you know, we want we asked for forgiveness and uh, and please come back because. Um, you know, this is a great country and the royal family are very important to us all. And the Queen needs your support, Harry, because, you know, William can't do it all. Catherine can't do it all. The Prince of Wales is taken on the Queen's role now. So he's even more busy. So, you know, Harry is badly needed here. And I hope in March, which he's got till March to rethink it, he comes back. And talking of the Queen, Arthur, obviously you photographed her many times over the years. When was the last time you took a photograph of Her Majesty? Um, I think before the lockdown, although I did do Prince Philip uh, a few weeks ago uh, to Windsor Castle when when he was uh, handing back uh, his commander in chief to the rifles uh, regiment. And uh, he looked so good and sprightly. But I've been watching the, the newsreels of the Queen, uh, the things she has done. And she's still amazing. And she's still putting as much effort as she possibly can uh, to, to, to sort of keep people during this awful crisis, this terrible crisis we're going through, keep people's spirits high. And she's made some quite important statements and speeches. And uh, and she will obviously keep doing that because, you know, one thing about the royals, it's duty, duty, duty. They don't shirk the duty. And, and the Prince of Wales, of course, has been making some amazing speeches uh, and, and statements and, and uh, encouragement. So, you know, we have to get Harry back. He could do some as well. And Arthur, if, if I made you choose, have you got one favourite photograph of your entire career? I suppose the one photograph I've got, which uh, I didn't take, uh, two years ago, the Prince of Wales introduced me to Pope Francis at the Vatican. And that picture, it, oh, that's it there. Yeah, that's my favourite picture. And uh, I can't tell you the emotion that was going through me that day. I can't. It was incredible. So I think that's the picture that I that I treasure most. And, Prin and Prince Charles there in the background. Hope, I hope that's on your sideboard, that one. Hey, listen, it listen, was... all the photographs, <laughs> and you, you've never taken a photograph of me or, or Ruth. Can you correct no. that today? It would be oh, a yeah. great honour. It would be a oh, great okay, honour okay. to be photographed oh, by Arthur on. Edwards. Hang on, Arthur, hang on. Get my fringe right. It's not a selfie, you know. Here we... Look this way. Oh, mm. my God, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, 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 thank you very thank much you, indeed. Thank you, Arthur. That's an honour. Many happy returns, Arthur. 80 years of age. Um, just one question. Uh, you've had seven weddings, royal weddings, four royal funerals, seven royal births. Retirement on the horizon or not? Do you think about it? Not for a while, Eamon. I'm still, still keeping fit and I'm still looking forward to uh, working with the Prince of Wales and William and Catherine and, of course, the lovely Camilla. She's... Uh, mm. She's the star. Look at her. She looks gorgeous. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Really appreciate yeah. that. And um, uh, you can email that to me, OK? That picture. OK, we'll do it. Good lad. Pride of place for us, God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy birthday. God. God bless. Take care. What a nice man. What a nice what man. A lovely man. Great, great guy. Part of uh, Fleet Street history.